Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. What business owners need to do when closing their doors for good. And it seems to me if you're closing your door, at least you're doing it for good as opposed to for bad. Possibly closing it to protect stuff as opposed to closing the door repeatedly on that IRS auditor who took all your money's face, which would be closing the door for bad instead of for good, at least in theory. Any case, first an attempt at a joke. President Biden let us know he has recovered from COVID and- Yes, I have completely recovered. Is once again feeling- I question your actions, Captain. I question your choices. High and mighty. However, reporters suspect he got into his son's stash again and is really just feeling high as a kite. Oh, oof. high as a kite, everybody. Goofball. Reporters advising the administration, it's high time you hide the hemp in a higher hiding place. Tax tip 2022-122, August 10th, 2022. There are a few things business owners need to do before they close their business. So obviously if you're closing up shop, if you're closing the business, you wanna be able to do it as cleanly as possible so that you can move on to the next thing that you're looking to move on to. The last thing you need is the IRS and the old business kind of dragging you down when you're trying to move on to whatever the next thing is that you're gonna be doing. So of course, they need to fulfill their federal tax responsibilities. Note that if you're setting up your tax obligations, sometimes, especially things like payroll, for example, things like uh, different types of entities, S corporations, C corporations, LLCs can be a little bit complex to unwind. You wanna make sure that you unwind them properly because it could come back and haunt you at, at a future point in time. And you also wanna keep in mind some state obligations you might have for things like LLCs and S corporations if those have been set up because the state might be charging you a fee and if you don't close those things out properly you can get stuck in the cycle where they just keep charging you fees even though you try to close the business so it's also important to notify the irs of their plans business owners must take these steps when closing a business so you file a final tax return and related forms so you want to make sure you mark it off as it's basically your final tax return and you're telling the irs that Note that that's not the only step you need to do. Oftentimes people think, well, I, I told the IRS it's my final tax return. But again, if you set up some other entities like an LLC or an S corporation, for example, you got you got to close those things out properly and especially be making sure you're mindful of what the state uh, requirement is as well. So that you so again, you can get it closed out nicely so you can you can move forward. It's worth the effort to do it. Uh, right, if you can. So the type of return to file and related forms depends on the type of business. So clearly if you're a business, you could be a sole proprietorship, you could be an S corporation, you could be an LLC, you might be a C corporation, but less, less likely you could be a partnership. For example, they all have their different final tax forms to be completing. So take care of employees. Business, business owners with one or more employees must pay any final wages or compensation, make final federal tax deposits and report employment taxes. So you wanna make sure that you do that as well because if you don't pay the employees properly and report properly, the IRS can think of it not only as, as though you didn't uh, pay your own taxes, but they could say, well, you're responsible for the withholdings because they made you responsible for withholdings of the employee's money. And if that's not properly handled, they could try to say, well, now you've you've you know taken money from the employee in essence because you didn't pay the payroll taxes properly or didn't report properly. And of course, if you stop in the middle of the year and close the doors, you still have the responsibility for the year in reporting. So the employees know their wages and the IRS knows the wages. So you got the W-2s, the 1099s, that's for contractors and the W-3s and the quarterly 941s and all that, uh, all that stuff. So you wanna make sure you follow through with that stuff. The person that's most likely, the place that most businesses are most likely to get sued uh, at a later point is, is sadly the from the employees oftentimes and the payroll taxes can be some of the more sticky uh, areas and stuff that you would like to get right the first time going back into the payroll taxes and trying to figure them out at a later point 
uh, is a tedious task and it'll take more time that way. So you'd like to get it done right the first time with that one generally. So pay taxes owed. So even if the business closed now, the, the payment may be, may be due next filing season. So clearly the IRS is still gonna want their money. So, so if you close the business, the IRS is still gonna say, you know, you need to pay us or else we're gonna be charging you the penalties and interest. So you wanna file the final tax return and pay your final taxes on time. And again, if you don't close it properly, some of these flow through entities like an S corporation, an LLC, a partnership might not be taxable entities on the federal side of things because they're flow through entities to the 1040. But uh, they could be taxable on the state side of things. So you might think, well, if those aren't properly closed, whatever, no big deal. But on the state side of things, you're st they're still going to hit you with penalties, maybe, possibly. So, and that's frustrating. So, so try to close those out properly. Report payments to contract workers, businesses that paid contractors at least $600 for services, including parts and materials during the calendar year in which they go out of business must report those payments. So the contractors are the people that are not employees, they're sole proprietorships, they're not corporations, because if they were corporations, you typically don't have to issue a 1099. You don't have to give them the, the W-2, you don't have to do as much reporting as with an employee, which is the most important thing you want to make sure you are doing. Uh, but uh, you're supposed to give them that, that 1099 form to give that information to the IRS. Again, not as critical a thing the, the, as the W-2 is probably not going to you know cause you as most sole proprietors as much trouble, but you want to make sure you're following through with that year end reporting stuff in the final year of operations, even if you stopped in the middle of the year, because you don't want you know, it's just like, you know, you don't want your last employment or your last, your last, uh, your last job, your last business to be haunting you for the rest of your life, right? So you'd like to close things up, make sure it's settled as best you can, and then move, move. So cancel EIN and close IRS business account. Business owners should notify the IRS so they can close the IRS business account. So the EIN number, employer identification number, you're going to need that if uh, you had employees, obviously. But you might have an EIN number even if you didn't have the employees because you like to not have to give your social security number to people that, that need, say, contracting information or something like that. So, so you want to make sure you can close out the EIN number. Uh, keep business records. How long a business needs to keep, keep records depends on what records uh, in each document. So your records, you want to keep the records at least up until the statute of limitations, which is like three years. But you probably want to keep them for like five years or I don't, you know, because they could come after you over three years. So the IRS basically has a statute of limitations. But then they say, well, if the tax issue was over a certain dollar amount, then we can come after you for a longer period. And if we suspect fraud, intentional uh, misreporting, then we can basically come after you indefinitely, right? So you probably want to keep the records around or, or, or put them in put them in some storage, cloud storage or something as long as it's secure. And the payroll data is once again, the one that you're most likely to have future problems on the people that often come back and cause you problems in the future when you're trying to move forward here are often the employees, right? <laughs> so, so you want to, so if, you, if you're going to get sued by the employees or something like that, then you want to, in a future point, for whatever reason, whatever happens, whatever weird stuff goes on going forward, you want to make sure you have the payroll records and and so you can handle anything like that. Or the IRS says you didn't report something properly or something like that. You want to have the records. So irs.gov, there's a link to that here, has information to help guide business owners through the process of shutting down. There's a link to that here. Small businesses and self-employed taxpayers can find information, including what forms to file, how to report revenue received in the final year of business, how to report expenses incurred before closing. Business owners can also get helpful information on declaring bankruptcy, selling their business, and terminating retirement plans. So there's all that information here, and there'll be a link to this in the description.